Welcome to the Living the Dream Podcast with Curveball. If you believe, you can achieve. Welcome to the Living the Dream with Curveball Podcast, a show where I and a few guests that teach, motivate, and inspire. Today, we're going to be talking about happiness on your own terms, as I am joined by seasoned business, life coach, and author, Peter Teuscher. Peter says you can achieve happiness on your own terms, and his goals align with checklists that go beyond the superficial to where you can achieve deeper and more well, well-meaning well mental health and well-being. So we're going to be talking to him about everything that he's up to in his story and his book. So, Peter, thank you so much for joining me today. It's a pleasure to be with you. Thanks for having me. Why don't you start off by telling everybody a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, well, I'm originally from Canada, but I, I'm living in Europe now, and uh, I've had quite a, quite a, I have quite a diverse background. I was an entrepreneur in Canada. Uh, my brother and I opened a business, sold it. Uh, I traveled the world, backpacked for a while, ended up in Europe. I've worked in the corporate world, um, uh, managing teams, and uh, and then eventually uh, really d- developed my desire for coaching and helping other people, and um, got certified as a coach. And so now I I work with people at in all walks of life as a coach, and uh, and I do leadership training for for organizations to help people become better leaders uh, and. And, and really uh, nurturing the talent in their in their organizations. So, and I've written a book uh, about happiness because it's um, something that's uh, accompanied me for um, for quite some time. Before leaving Canada, I really struggled with uh, with depression, and I found the biggest change that I was able to make was by changing my beliefs and my habitual ways of thinking. And so. I, I look at it as if I, if I can find happiness after you know the the challenges I've been through, I think anybody can, and and I'd like to uh, support that. Well, tell the listeners how you develop your desire for coaching and helping people. Yeah, the, I think the coaching comes from uh, as far back as when I I, I um, was a volunteer basketball coach in Canada high school basketball and um and I and I had this experience with some of the students on the team who uh you know you develop a closer relationship with and you have deeper conversations and I found just being a mentor to them really uh helped them you know d- develop and you you saw these great changes and and I thought wow would wouldn't it be great to be able to do something like this uh for a living and I didn't really know what I didn't really have a sense of what coaching was other than, you know, teaching people a sport or that sort of thing. But then uh, when I left Canada, moved to Europe, uh, I started doing some sales coaching and I got some coaching myself uh, and and I started to really uh, get a sense that this was something for me. So I I took a few courses here and there and then until finally I committed to getting getting certified and then uh, that whole process uh, and, and realizing that. You know, uh, the experience that I've um, put together uh, and as well as the sort of knowledge and the personal growth uh, um, knowledge that I've acquired was really able to help help other people. And and so now I'm focused on that and um, I find it super rewarding. Well, I know in your bio, you talk about how your journey really kicked off when you face serious mental health issues and your early 30s. So talk about that as much as you can and walk the listeners through that. Sure. Yeah. I'm happy to share because I think um, I'm hoping that anyone else in a similar position um, can reach out for help because, uh, you know, I didn't even know what depression was until I I heard a a public service announcement on the radio that kind of described a lot of the stuff I was going through. And, you know, it was one of these messages that was, well, if you are experiencing one or more of these symptoms, you know, seek out a mental health practitioner. And, and so, uh, and so that's what I did. I actually uh, went to get some therapy. Initially, I thought there was something broken in my head. And I, I, I went to some some um, hypnotherapy to uh, I thought I, that that could fix uh, fix what was wrong in my head. 
and and anyway, I, I got to understand what it was and uh, sort of some of the history behind it. And it turns out you know, I, I was experiencing depression from childhood. Uh, you know, my first experiences uh, from memory were when I was um, seven in, in second grade. And so, uh, you know, thinking I, I was flawed and then going to therapy and recognizing actually I could change the way I felt uh, and I could um, do so by seeing the world differently by changing some of the beliefs that were leading me to these outcomes that only made me feel worse about myself. Um, and, uh, and so th that was, you know, it didn't happen overnight and it certainly wasn't this growth curve upwards. Uh, it was a bit of a roller coaster. I was up and then down up, but it was always, uh, two steps forward, one step back. But, um, you know, you put in the time and the commitment and, and, and you start to believe in yourself and you can you can make uh, you know unbelievable changes in your life, and that's what I you know hope to share with other people. Well, you're also a basketball coach, so tell mm -hmm. us about that, and tell us you know how long you've been coaching. Um, well, I I coached when I was in Canada. Um, I I tried to do it a bit while I was over here, but it's it's a time commit. I I think if you if you can't commit to being there regularly for the, the people that um, that need you uh, in that capacity, uh, I, I think you you need to. Um, I, I don't think you can do it, a, you know, halfway there. So uh, yeah, when I was in Canada, I I, um, I coached high school basketball for for a number of years, and um, and I got certified as a basketball coach and went through that whole program. That which you know that doing the theory part of coaching helped me. Uh, give, give me sort of the first glimpses into, you know, how mindset can impact uh, your performance as a player. Um, but not only that, it, it can impact, you know, the way you live your life and how successful you are. So, um, so yeah, the, the, I really enjoyed that. Um, and I, I just, there was a couple of students, you know, you, you're not going to reach all of them, but th those, those two or three students over the years that I coached that really had, were, um, you know, really changed their life around. I, I think that really, uh, stuck with me, and I, I'm I'm really grateful I've had that experience to this day. Um, I, I I had I coached in not a really great part of Vancouver, and so you had some you know you had students that came from rough backgrounds. I had one player who who had started the season late because his hand was recovering from a knife fight, and uh, you know, and he ended up being such a you know he really turned around uh, a lot of things about his life. Uh, living in a foster home and so on and and uh, i i think as much as i love the game of basketball because i you know i played myself uh just um using basketball as this vehicle to help influence in a positive way these young men as they were developing was uh, just a, such a rewarding experience well you worked as an executive in, in the corporate world so now tell us you know kind of what you did in the corporate world before your coaching Sure, absolutely. So uh, when I, uh, you know, I, I as I said, I, I built a business in Canada, uh, so I was very entrepreneurial. And uh, so when I came to Europe, I wasn't really quite sure what I was going to do. Um, but I, uh, I ended up uh, getting hired by an international company that uh, was just building their uh, their team in in Germany at the time. And so I was able to. Uh, be one of the first uh, managers in the in in the team. The managing director I reported to was uh, basically someone who trusted me to um, you know make that contribution contribution to the business, in, including sort of being part of assessment centers and developing these people and hiring the the initial team. And so that was sort of the, the first step. And um, you know ended up getting recruited for other companies and so on, so that I ended up working at a level where I reported directly into at board level for a, a, a mid-sized uh, corporation. Um, and, and so it really helped me see both, uh, you know, what it's like to be sort of a mid-level manager all the way up to, you know, the, the, the way the decisions and the thinking happens at, at board level. So I, you know, I reported to the COO of the company and, uh, and, and it gave me some real insights you know, for the top level of the business all the way down and how it affects the people and how to develop uh, a positive culture, um, how to, you know, really uh, um, 
get the right hire hire the right people and uh make sure they're kind of buying into a vision and all of those things were were super helpful and and I took that experience and and I I try and pass that on package together with sort of the the coaching knowledge and the understanding of how to uh manage change in organizations and also help individuals through a change process um and all of that corporate experience really helped me there What well, tell the listeners about your book tell us where we can get it and tell us what we can expect when we read it and why you decide to write it Um yeah well writing the book was I I really felt I had uh you know a lot to give especially considering you know I I didn't talk about my experience uh, with depression for a long time it's uh, stigmatized and it's only sort of recently since it, bringing out the book that I've I've talked more openly about it because I think it can value other pe- uh, people can get value from it but for me um I I hear a lot of people that come to me for coaching uh you know some people will come to me and say look I've I you know I I went to university I I've got the partner I've got the career I've you know maybe they even have a family and they 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 say but I'm still not happy so they've checked all these boxes that society tells you is going to make you happy and and still you feel like there's something missing because you've kind of done it on on other people's terms or you've you've followed this prescription of what other people think will make uh make, should make you happy and i i think happiness is a very individual thing but it's also not this goal that you reach it's it's something you can experience in all you know in every every moment of the day uh, and that's something you know when you've been in a dark place from your mental state uh i think you can you can when you contrast that to being uh happy and joyful on a re- regular basis you know i'm not happy 100% of the time i have my ups and downs but i th- i think that's what makes me appreciated and even more and so i encourage people to see happiness as this feedback that life gives you so based on the the choices you're making and the actions you're taking or the way you're seeing the world so if you're feeling happy it's like this inner guidance system that's telling you okay either the way i'm seeing the world is off kilter or the choices uh and actions i'm taking are are leading me away from the happiness i want or that it's distracting me from what i really want and when those when that's all based on your your core values and uh and and principles and and inner needs then the the feedback of happiness will be there far more in your life and that that's my philosophy that's my approach uh and for people who are looking to you know executives who are super successful uh but aren't happy because they're just under tons of pressure and they're going from one milestone and one achievement to the next I I love working with those people too because you know I help bring more balance into their life and I I'm hoping that's what the book will do and it's set up as a coaching book because at the end of uh, all but one chapter there's a list of questions so that people can because coaching is all about asking the right questions so you can it, it's sort of meant to help coach yourself through a lot of these things and to to create a set of beliefs that support your success and happiness rather than standing in the way Well, tell us about any kind of upcoming projects that you're working on that listeners need to be aware of. Um, well, I I've have the ongoing. I've, I've been doing a lot of these podcasts, which is great. But uh, I I'm working on you know getting the book out there. But other than that, it's my day to day working with people to help them find the best uh, version of themselves, helping them find their own potential. what i have recently started doing uh since last year is getting back to working with young people so i've been i've been actually coaching sort of 16 to 20 year olds and uh it, it, who are open for coaching to help them show their find their potential at a young age but um i i write a blog every week if people are interested in this kind of information you can uh check out my blog it's on my website petertoucher.com and the last name spelled t e u s c h e r um so yeah people can read my blog uh, that's uh, i'm passionate about writing um and uh yeah once the once the book has kind of run its course i've got another one in the pipeline that i want to write next year Okay, well you asked my question about throwing out your contact information petertoucher.com. So close us out with some final thoughts maybe if there was something I forgot to talk about that you would like to touch on or any final thoughts you have for the listeners. Yeah, I think the the message I often like to leave people with is um remember not to believe everything you think. We think thousands and thousands of thoughts every day and sometimes we we take them as 
gospel as the truth and uh and they they can be very negative and get us down and i think when you um look at the thoughts you have and ask you know is this useful for me is this true um and and you ask those qu- kind of questions you can discern between you know the helpful thoughts that you have on a daily basis uh and the ones that are really holding you back so don't believe everything you think all right ladies and gentlemen peter tosha.com Please be sure to check him out, follow, rate, review, share this episode to as many people as possible, check out his book, jump on your favorite podcast app, give us a follow, a review, share the show. If you have any guests or suggestion topics, Curtis Jackson 1978 at att.net is the best place to send them. Thank you for listening and supporting the show. And Peter, thank you for joining me and thank you for all that you do. Thanks for having me, Curtis. It's been a pleasure. For more information on the Living the Dream podcast, visit www.djcurveball.com. Until next time, stay focused on living the dream.